festival oh. now. Oh, that's a really nice time. Oh, we should make sure the wrap is going Shh. here. Carol, this morning, thank you. One hour to drive 10 miles. Can we have an approval of today's agenda? Thank you, thank you. How about the minutes? Any corrections or additions? Minutes are fine. A compliment on the minutes. Well, uh, a motion to approve would be even better. Yes. No, make a motion yeah. and adding a compliment because the minutes were good. Oh, okay. Motion to compliment. Motion to compliment. That's yeah, a new yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually in the new procedure. You could actually compliment it. All right. Uh, let me move into the chair before we have a pretty busy agenda today. Um, I'll talk more about in the board report, but the MTA board approved the redesign of Staten Island's Express bus network at this month's meetings. The new route structure begins August 19th and follows two years of study and community engagement, including six open houses held in both 2017 and 2018, <coughs> as well as a formal pub public hearing to satisfy requirements for major service changes. And I think the, um, the uh, public hearing was held at... College of Staten Island? It was held at College of Staten Island. Uh, so it's William, Island. I believe it's Williamson Theater. I believe it's yeah. the, yes, the actual it is. name of the place. It's not far from the, it's so, in the same property as the, DD, the Staten Island DDRO. It's where, it's where the fair hearings are usually held. Yeah, as I, as I and recall. they have a shuttle yes. bus sometimes yeah. there. Um, one way this is being done is a 20th, well, let, let me just, the basic principle of the redesign is to reduce the amount of time express buses spend in traffic or at stops on Staten Island, which is a funny way of putting it, but in Manhattan, and to concentrate on moving riders between the boroughs more rapidly and reliably, and I will go into this a little bit in the board report. One way this is being done is a 23% decrease in the average length of routes. While bus stops are being changed, 72% of riders will continue to use the same express bus stop that they use today. Of course, it may be further away from them, but... No, no these are exactly the same. Okay. Exactly the same. A major impetus for these changes are being made to increase the reliability of service, which would decrease long waits for a bus and crowding once a vehicle arrives. In recognition of the major changes to the network, Staten Island Express bus routes are being renamed and renumbered, with the X prefix to be replaced by SIM for Staten Island to Manhattan. This is similar to the numbering systems in place for Bronx and Queens Express buses, such as QM and VXN and that sort of thing. Um, getting, Stat someone's oh. um, getting Staten Island Express bus riders ready for the change will be a tall order, and New York City Transit is already at work to prepare the rides, riders for their new commutes. Yesterday, there was a city council hearing on the approaching shutdown of the L train west of the Bedford Avenue station and the MTA and city responses to the service changes that are needed to keep the city moving despite the shutdown. There was little new ground broken with New York City Transit and, the, and DOT presenting refined plans and projections for their mitigation plan and discussing briefly the change in bicycle lane treatments which are now on a one-way pair of streets rather than just on 13th Street. They were yeah, going to have a two-way bike lane on 13th, yeah. now it'll be one way on 13th, yeah. one way on 12th, the other way on 12th, yeah. <laughs> which satisfies a lot of complaints. Um, the city did further explain its provisions for limited drop-offs and deliveries along 14th Street, which are modeled on the treatment of King Street in Toronto, there's a surprise, huh? <laughs> uh, to make streetcar traffic more efficient. Other than a council member who apparently thought the entire L line would be closing for 15 months, and I don't want to ask who's that. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you outside of the public. Oh my God. I already know who it is, and I don't want to. I don't oh want my to say God. It. After how much of publicity? Yes. <laughs> <Oy>. um, <laughs> More than oi. And some sparring over the accuracy and tone of the presentation made by the 14th Street Coalition, there was little of note. The Long Island Railroad began sales of the Atlantic ticket on June 6th. With the first yes. weekly tickets under the program starting June 9. That was TJ. That was. As you know, Atlantic <laughs> Ticket is a t pilot of our Freedom Ticket concept. We have been advocating for over 10 years. Has it been that long? It has been. Though. Another OI. It has been. The Atlantic Ticket provides discounted fares for travel between 10 Brooklyn and Queens Long Island Railroad stations. Riders have a choice of either a single ride or a round trip at $5 each way or a $60 70-day unlimited ticket that includes a weekly metro card. The latter is a great option for regular commuters as the Atlantic ticket costs only 50 cents more than a seven-day express bus metro card, but will save many commuters hours per week compared with riding an express bus. 
and gives you the freedom of picking between a commuter train, a bus, or a subway. Initial sales of the Atlantic ticket have been promising, although heavily weighted towards the single tickets. We'll be working with the MTA to get the word out on ways that the weekly Atlantic ticket can help the long-suffering commuters of Southeast Queens. On Friday, June 15th, Chris and I, along with Bill, Bradley, Ellen, and Sheila, uh, from our staff attended a set of media events arranged to celebrate the introduction of the Atlantic ticket. Together with the Transit Rider Council attendees were Long Island Railroad President Phil Eng, the Brooklyn and Queens Borough Presidents, city and state elected officials representing districts served by Long Island Railroad where um, Atlantic ticket may be used. And they were all very high on this, like they've been behind it for, for the whole thing. I can really say Adams. Adam certainly has been. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, it's almost it's almost it until, true. until until I had to like yeah, so until really, until yeah. I finally saw her and she knew she knew me and well, I told her and I gave oh, her Melinda's the, definitely on board. Melinda had to go to her, not to her staff, because staff were not telling her. Although the term enhanced station initiative isn't being used in public statements, the MTA is proceeding with work to complete nineteen of the original thirty two stations that were scheduled to be upgraded. For example, the 30th and 36th Avenue stations on the Astoria line reopened on June 22nd. May I interject and compliment something for, for that? Sure. They did get them done and they're beautiful. Mm. Oh, you've, you've seen them. Huh? You, yeah. You Every saw them. Morning, huh? Great. Yeah, no, I, I think everyone who sees the finished product is happy with the finished product. It's, you know. Just take a good look now because later on it will not look that way. <laughs> Oh, no. The Broadway and the 39th Avenue stations will close for eight months of renovation in early July, while work continues on the Ditmars Boulevard station, which is remaining open through the process. While costs were considerably higher than originally expected, the concept of systematically renovating stations throughout the system has received a boost from last Thursday's collapse of a section of ceiling over the Manhattan-bound platform at the Borough Hall 4 yeah. and 5 yeah. stations. Yeah. And boy, has that gotten a lot of airplay. Uh, wow. Yeah. Andrew, can I add something to that? Because I was there. If you must. I was there. Not when it happened. Yes. You were? Yes. Your head looks normal. Because uh, I wasn't in the front. I was in okay. the middle. Okay. Waiting for a train, because I was supposed to go to the Bronx for a meeting. All of a sudden, I hear, boom! Comes down. Half of the people are running. The one lady that claimed she hit her head, she was nowhere near there. The only person who had that shoulder hurt with that light thing you see sticking out, he got hurt in the shoulder with it. But by four was dead less than ten minutes with Ron, Ron, Priyanka, what, I can't say her name anymore. Ronnie. Ronnie, thank you. Ronnie Hakem? Yeah. Really made sure the trains were still running, but they were bypassing on the Manhattan side. But the press was with there, but it would be nice if one press was not even there. The Brooklyn bound four and fives, and of course the two and three lines were operated normally. It's just yeah. the Manhattan bound. Uh, selected four. fives were going over the two line, but they did tell people to go to Fulton Street or go to Nevins, which I think it was a wrong move to send them to Nevins because there was a major crowd control problem at Nevins, which the trains at 32, a lot of the trains and cops did respond. The passengers were there. They did the check, you know, trying to control. They sent them to Nevins because that's the next stop eastbound after Borough Hall on yeah. the four or five. But they didn't send it to the two or three, and it was a little more control safety because you didn't have to worry about taking the four or five. You can always take another train to another train. So it gave people other ideas. Well, but I mean, water, water is a pervasive problem, and <coughs> and I hope and I know they said they were also checking to see if there was road work going on above in the street that would have allowed water to come down. DOT was supposed to fix that street. Right? DOT well, was working in the street because I was in that area the weekend prior and I saw the work going on. But we don't know what it is yet, so I'm not going to jump no, to I agree. No, I agree with you. Other intensive work in the system will, will be undertaken at 57th Street F Station, 28th <coughs> Street 6, and 23rd Street F and M stations in Manhattan. These stations will be closed beginning in July until December, but unlike some enhanced station initiative projects, they have readily available travel alternatives right in the area. Also early this month, work began on the Richmond Valley Staten Island Railway Station. This work is expected to wrap up in 10 months. In Brooklyn, work is beginning this month on the installation of elevators at the 86th Street R Line Station in Bay Ridge. This is an extended project as the elevators are expected to become operational, not until 2020 actually. This project will also address accessibility by reconfiguring station infrastructure such as handrails, turnstiles, and powered gates, rail signage, and platform panels. Two new elevators, one connecting the street to the mezzanine and the other from the mezzanine to the platform, mm -hmm. 
will provide access to the station and the, and the station agent booth will be modified to a wheelchair friendly height. Neither the Staten Island nor the Brooklyn Project will require extended closures, although the 86th Street station will be closed during some nights and weekends with substitute bus service. Last week, New York City Transit announced that weekend closures have, that have disrupted the two and the three train travel to and from Brooklyn through the Clark Street Tunnel have concluded on time and within budget. The weekend closures lasted a little over a year and have even earned a notation on the MTA's official subway map. Hopefully the subway maps have been updated. I have seen some without the uh, connotation that the Clark Street tube is closed. This work was part of the restoration, of course, following Superstorm Sandy damage and included cabling and conduit replacements, major pump room work, improvements to communication and control systems in the tunnel, and track and signal repairs. The work installed 99,000 feet of copper communication cable, 54,000 feet of fiber optic cable, 29,000 feet of radio antenna cable, and 26,000 feet of signal cable. The project also included repair of structural defects in the tunnel and track work. Did, yeah. did they put any kind of protection against flooding in the future? Yes, yes, Don't on both ends. They, that, that happened right after. That was sure. That's a major initiative of, of, of Chairman Loda. He, uh, and, and Andy Byford, they have waterproofed several areas. Um, this so should, hopefully, hopefully they're right, and it was a really a one, one in 100 year storm, but they have ab absolutely taken precautions in many uh, many street openings and, and gratings and all sorts of things. They and ends of tunnels. Ends of tunnels. Yes. They've also <laughs> raised, raised a lot of things, and they've made a lot of things modular so they can be picked up and moved out if they have, if they, if the day before a storm. Yeah, we, we, we really learned from this one, hopefully. Uh, following up on the commitments he has made in his first months on the job and in his fast-forward plan, New York City Transit President Andy Byford has hired Alex um, El Elegadin. Is that my pronouncing that correctly? Elegadin, right? Uh, I, I think so. Do you, Carol, do you have a better? I, I, uh, uh, I guess we'll, we'll go with that. I'm pretty close. sure it's not. It's close enough. Yeah, I, th I think that's, a, anyway, that's pretty close. Anyway, Alex yeah. is Senior Advisor for System-Wide Accessibility. Mm -hmm. Mr. Elegudin's role is to oversee and implement the Fast Forward Plan initiative to expand accessibility to subway and bus customers, as well as improve accessoride service. He began work at the MTA this past Monday, June 25th. I'll say Mr. E has long been an advocate for the integration of people with disabilities into the community and last served as Accessibility Program Manager of the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. Mm -hmm. He commutes via Express Bus and Accessoride. Do you know where he commutes from? Uh, I believe it's somewhere in Brooklyn. Is that uh, yeah, right? Brooklyn? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, okay. Okay. correct. Mm -hmm. We're working on several possibilities for our annual field trip in August. We hope to have a place and schedule to announce by the July meeting. Somewhere fun? Some of these are fun, yes. These trips um, let us get out to see elements of the system that may not be familiar, and sometimes there's even pizza or tasty other food <laughs> included. <laughs> Why am I thinking you guys are doing somewhere right now? No, we're not. Actually. No, probably so, not. Hang on. Um, let me just do the board report quickly. Um, hey, Stuart. So, the big news, of, of course, in yesterday's City Council hearing was the new bus plan that DOT and Transit have announced for the L train closure. Um, while it's probably not enough to call off the lawsuit that, that a coalition of people in the village, um, represented by Arthur Schwartz, um, now have in court, um, it, it definitely will satisfy a lot of the complaints that were received uh, regarding the initial bus plan. First of all, this bus plan will go from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., which is an all-day thing. No, it's 10 p.m. It's 5 a.m. Oh, it's 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah. What? It's That's even longer. It's um, like an hour before the, the, yeah. it really builds up. Mm. Yeah. I don't worry about that. But um, initially it had been thought it was going to be just rush hours and that was not nearly enough. Um, of course, as I mentioned earlier, there is now a, there is now not a bike lane in two directions on 13th Street, but westbound on 13th, eastbound on 12th. Um, commercial deliveries are still going to be allowed. Um, um, there's a there's a whole system of feeder buses um, that will be serving Bedford Avenue and and Manhattan, as well as ferries. Um, special HOV lanes on the Williamsburg Bridge, and of course the same extra uh, J, M, Z, and G service. 
Um, of course, there's the new transfers um, at Livonia and Junius, um, Broadway and Hughes Street, 21st Street on Hunters Point Avenue in Queens. Um, some of these uh, transfers will be permanent, such as Livonia Junius. It's in the next capital program. That's going to actually be a built and closed transfer, which I think is going to change a lot of people's travel habits. Um, so that's all. That's all good. Also help the mall customers. Yeah. Have they made any provisions for keeping the streets open to the buses? Bert, can you speak up? I want to know if they've made any provisions for keeping the streets open for DOT buses. DOT has committed to, to keeping it yeah. to a bus, almost like a bus bridge moving all the time. Yeah. It's uh, 80, uh, they're going to run 80 buses an hour. Supposedly. Yeah, I mean, if there's a demand for that, we'll yeah. see. Um, I mean, some people who, who rode, you know, west on under 14th Street and possibly change to other subway lines might choose to get to those subway lines in a different manner that rather than taking a subway to a ferry to a bus to another train. I mean, I, 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 you know, folks probably wouldn't opt for that. They might take a G to an A or C and get to the destination that way or, or a G, uh, you know, up to an E and, or M or, or 7 and get to their destination that way. So it's not clear that everybody's going to be taking a three or four seat ride to complete their trips. And, and I am pretty convinced that Depending on your destination, um, MTA will be producing a booklet like they always do when there's a major uh, thing. You know, if your destination was this, here's your best route. If your destination was this, so we will see. Andrew, yes. Um, as Bert, I agree with Bert, but the one thing I want to add, one thing, when you mentioned about the shuttle bus, did they change anything of the L one, two, and three? Oh, sorry. One of the reasons I was late is I have an up-to-date report on the L on the L train. Right now, there is a big meeting going on. I have a report from Could Carolyn's office. Let Chris finish, and then we'll call. Okay, on. but that's why when he just asked about the L train for an update. No, that's, uh, that's the only reason I was going to. I think I think there is a little different pattern in some of those there, there's buses. A, there's another bus. Yeah, there's a fourth bus. I have an update on the L4 if you want. Yeah, I was going to, because they told me you were at the meeting. I was going to ask you later. No, Folks, okay, okay, no, I want Folks, that. Folks, we will get to that. I'm not worried. Okay. No, but do you want me to bring up right now? No, it's going on not right, right now. Oh, okay, Thank but you. I will give you, the meeting is still going on. That's fine. And I have it direct from Congresswoman Maloney's office and Chief of Staff who was there, which is why I am late, because I was on the phone with her and then texting. Um, new fare payment um, is coming, as everybody has seen. Um, in 2019, um, will, the rollout will begin. Uh, Cubic is on board with, with the schedule of this. Um, bank issued cards with the with the required chip will be uh, will start to be issued in 2019. Um, the first group of stations will be uh, the Lex line from Grand Central to Atlantic Barclays Center. Um, those are the turnstiles and entrances that will get the first treatment of the new tap card. Um, the MTA issued card for those that don't want to use a or don't choose to use a bank. Uh, issued card will probably come in um, 2020. Uh, continued rollout will happen uh, in 2021, but you will still be able to use a metric card likely until 2022 or thereabouts before the entire system is converted over. And the beauty of having Cubic do this is Cubic. Cubic. They have done this in London and other places. They're the people that have done our current turnstiles as well as path turnstiles. And all that's, and they will put the reader on the side, on the front. And when MetroCard is done, all I have to do is unscrew the slot on the top, remove it, and the same turnstiles will continue to be used. So that, that's a good thing, and that's really going to speed the ride. Also, I neglected to mention that next year you'll be able to use smartphone apps to, uh, to access the turnstiles as well. I asked during the meeting, how forgiving is the angle that you have to present these to the turnstile? And it's pretty forgiving. Um, it was very quick. Um, so that's, that's an exciting turn of events. Um, you may have heard in the news, um, but President Byford, well, during the L train closure, one of the things that was going to be accomplished was a platform door pilot at the 3rd Avenue and 14th Street station. That is now not going to happen, but the, a much better development in my way of thinking is 6th Avenue and 14th Street will be, uh, will have elevators installed, and that will be done during the closure. So I, you know, I think that's a far more useful thing for riders um, to get another station accessible. 
And um, they are will, they doing a platform door thing? They will do. They will announce where that will be later. Um, but it is still on the docket. Two board members have asked for it. Um, board member <coughs> Jones and board member Merdler think it's a really great thing. I happen to think it's another thing that can go wrong. Will actually slow dwell time and on lines where you have more than one car type, they will not all line up with the platform doors. I also want to know if one door is broken, does that put the entire platform out, or can they still operate others? So we, we need to find out a lot of stuff How about the How much is platform. it going to cost? It's a lot, and, and Andy Byford also said that. Do you have any idea? A lot? I don't know. It's enough to put elevators. Like in the million? It's enough to it's put elevators, elevators, in. elevators in 6th Avenue. Yeah. You can. Yeah. No. And, um, it also requires a platform that is that can take a lot of weight. These things are very, very heavy. Uh, I also also would like to know, Air Train. I don't know if you've written. I know certainly Sharon has, but if you've written Air Train to JFK, you'll notice that the train sort of slows down so that the doors line up before they will open the doors. That can add to dwell time. So I want to know if that is also the case on these. So we need to find out a lot of things, but I think getting stations accessible. Is, is a lot more important issue at the moment. I know platform doors can save lives, but I also know that New Yorkers are prone to holding doors and breaking things. So we and just, they still we do just that, have to see. Yes, did you have a question? Yes, I have a question. So the sixth on this topic, right? Yes, on the 6th Avenue F train and 14th Street, will we have a getting renovation and including elevators to the L, right? Yeah, elevators from the L to, to the, the F and M to the street. Street, yeah. Not connected to the two and three? But uh, no. no. So that's that's one, I mean, the L train shutdown is going to be a real pain, but there's some good things that are going to happen during the, uh, yes. during it. And does it have renovation on the uh, F&M at 14th Street? On what? So does it have a renovation on the F&M at 14th Street? Uh, at this point... And I give an update, I will give an update yeah, to I answer know. these questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as we're on the topic right now, Give the update. Okay. There, there was a meeting on, and that's when you were late. So that's also why I was late, besides the student, let's not even talk about the number six and, and trains pulling out just when the other one pulls in. I spoke to Byford about that, by the way. Good. I'm glad you spoke to him. It happened again today at Grand Central. I mean, it is ludicrous. But that, but that was one reason I'm late, but this is the main reason I was late because I'm getting this um, right now from Congresswoman Maloney's. There was a meeting on Monday, um, uh, and this is the second one this week with all of the elected officials and all the affected community people and whatever. And first of all, they're, they're, they're going to, to answer Chris's question. I'm you know? listening right here. Okay. Um, the... The L4 route, that's that bus, is now going to go from, from Bedford Avenue straight through, all the way through on 14th Street, now that they have expend, extended. Uh, does everybody know about the hours that have now been extended? Yes, we have talked about that. About the shuttle bus, yes. okay. But there is a big community concern, which we should know about, and which has been told to me, personally and then through the Congresswoman's office about the, what that's going to do to the traffic on the side streets on 15th and 13th. And so even though it will make it easier for people to take the L train, there is, it's, back, it's on the verge of hysteria. Uh, not only the people who live there, but all of the, the, all of the businesses and everything else. So, I don't know, they, they're going to try to have some meetings with DOT and see if they can figure out maybe by changing hours for trucks or, or cars or, or pickups or whatever. But, so it, it ha it's good. Deliveries it's, are still going to happen. I, that, that was no, deliveries are going to happen, but they're trying to keep, I only say hours, yeah. but some of the businesses are saying, that that doesn't work for them, and they could have their deliveries on either 15th or 13th, but then the people who live on 15th and 13th are saying, no, your trucks are going to block even more. It's no matter what, you know. Yeah. Okay, that's number one. The, big, the biggest item on today was about the flexibility on ferry service, 
will there be more ferries added? If you're shaking your head no, Bill. They can only run. They only run ferries every seven and a half minutes. Well, they're really well. Then they will have. Will they be able to add? That's the second question. If they can't, will they be able to add capacity on the ferries in somehow? I don't know. I mean, you don't want the ferries to to uh, to sink either, you know. By but that is their big concern. Do you recall, Trudy? last summer when the summer of hell was predicted and they, they started this whole series of buses on Long Island to get people to various uh, stations and things and yeah. it turned out they weren't required because people actually <coughs> drove to a station, another station okay. and used the I am, I am just bringing up what their concern is I got today, it. Yep. okay? Okay, and then the, the next, con well, actually the bigger concern is about, the, about having a one fare ride all the way from Brooklyn, all yeah, the way. And, and it has to be, that's what it had been. No, but what they are saying, this, uh, she's giving me an example. If you take the subway from the Upper West Side and you take that to the ferry, this is like going reverse now. And then you, then you get off the ferry and the L is running in Brooklyn. Yeah. Do you have to pay another fare? You should not. Well, can, because can your trip we was interrupted some, at no cause by you. Can we get some clarification? Absolutely, on that? That, I, that much I know. Okay, but how is it going to work? Is it going to work like a transfer or, yes. or whatever? Are we are that okay? If you could, I'll get to that. Get that for me. Yeah. That is, uh, I'm that just is bringing MTA up policy. all of the concerns oh, that, uh, as of a, a half hour ago. Uh, can, I, can I just add because because. Trudy's not wrong because there is there's been concern of confusions, as you mentioned. One council member is mentioning they're thinking, and I told we all and Trudy, you're correct. It's been we heard that there's supposed to be a transfer from the ferry SBS, whatever they call the L ferry, mm -hmm. to the SBS to the L train. The concern problem is is the Brooklyn side is a confusion problem because people no this is you may be saying it right, Andrew, but. Why would it be a free transfer in one direction in the morning well, trip that, to work uh, and it wouldn't be going home? you're talking logically or whatever, Four people. what Chris Four is people. saying and what I'm saying is this is a I concern. Okay. I'm glad people are talking because about it. Because they, they know that once they pay their fare on, on the, they pay their fare on the subway to get down to where, to, to the ferry. Yep. This is the reverse commute. Yep. Okay. They pay their fare on the subway. I'm reading this from here now. <coughs> and then they get on this this bus thing, whatever. You know, that is transferable from the from the subway to yeah. that bus that goes along 14th Street. That deposits them at the ferry. And they get on the ferry also with their transfer. But what they want to know is... I know, Trudy. I got it. Trust me, I got the, I okay. got the point. Okay, well, can you please I'll get for that. me, yes. for Minna, for Carolyn, yes. a clarification, Absolutely. because they are very confused. And I may have something else, because the meeting is still going on. Okay. I may have to interrupt The fact again. that you can ride from the Upper West Side to 14th Street, take a train to Brooklyn, and transfer as many times as you want without another fare, is going to be maintained. Because that's that's the whole point, is it's supposed to be seamless. That's... It, they don't believe it. Okay. All right. Can we move on from L train now? I'm done. Okay. Okay. I'm I have a Lexington Avenue question about your call, Metro Clark. Hold on a second. So, um, the Clark Street Tunnel reopening is really wonderful news. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the board report, um, you know, Brooklyn Manhattan travel has really been severely <laughs> crippled in the last year while this uh, this tube is done. So. When the uh, Canarsie tube closes in April of 2019, uh, there will only be one more tube that is left to work on from Sandy, and that's the Rutgers tube that carries the F trains, and that is happening well after the Canarsie tube reopens. And um, I've seen a few comments, you know, what happens if the Canarsie tube doesn't reopen on time and all of that? Well, there is very severe liquidated damages every day that Judlow does not have that uh, tunnel open and the service operating to the tune of $400,000 a day. I don't think they want to uh, incur that kind of uh, damage. So I am pretty sure that will be done on time and on schedule. And um, 
the Staten Island Express redesign that we mentioned earlier, what this does is it takes away the ridiculous practice now of a bus that was going from Staten Island to Midtown, having it go into lower Manhattan and traverse the island of Manhattan through very crowded streets to get to Midtown. Um, what they will do is, not on weekends, but on weekdays, we'll have a bus destined for downtown, likely to use the Battery Tunnel, and a bus destined for Midtown, likely to use the Lincoln Tunnel. Um, and that way they will not get packed. Um, there are some stops that are being done away with on Staten Island. I asked them uh, what's the average distance that somebody will have to walk to their express bus. Um, it's a little further than it is now, uh, but it's still quite usable. So. Um, that is, that is pretty much, I think, all I have um, on the board report. So, um, what did you have, Chris? You mentioned about the new card. Two questions. The new fair payment. The new fair payment. Um, you said it was on the Lexington line from... Did you say the, no, Grand Central to Atlantic Park Place. Okay, any other lines? Not the initial set, stretch. Yeah. Okay. That's so the test. Because I, I lost you a little bit when you went to <laughs> there. The other question is reduced fear. What's up with that? Reduced fare will be accommodated, just no. like it is now. Okay, so it means the reduced, do we know what it's going to look like? It's so going to be the new fare payment like card. No, no, I mean it's going to look like somewhere like this. It's probably going to look fair. It's probably going to look similar to the to your building pass, That's uh, and, 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 yeah. and somewhere you know it'll look somewhere between a metro card and your building pass. And it'll be more that. easier access to energize yeah. the car too. And that's that probably won't happen until the end, near the end of the process. Which yeah. part? The 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 the, uh, the reduced fare. Oh, yeah. reduced yeah. fare. Yeah. I saw Al Coutre said in CPOC uh, that that would be at the end of the, and he's he's in charge so of new fare payments. Yeah. So uh, that probably won't happen until okay. close to the end anyway. of the process. Anyway, oh, Andrew, did I hear correct that it, on the Lexington line it's going to be the downtown from? From Grand Central? No. It's the Lexington line from Grand Central to Atlantic Barclays. Why would it be downtown only? Well, you got to come no. home at some well, point. No, you said to Atlantic. Yeah, right. yeah but not going up to the Upper East Side. No, that, not yet. Okay, not the very first trip. I'm telling you that there is some confusion about that, too, because that's another thing that I was asked many number of questions about. And, you know, Seventy-seven, eighty-six, whatever. Okay. Grand Central to Atlantic Terminal doesn't okay. include anything so north of Grand Central. Okay. So that be made clearer because people would say it's going to be on the Lex Line, all of our stations. I mean, I'm talking about. I don't know who said that, Drew. Half of Lex. Community board eight people who sometimes don't uh, get it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Only you West Siders have have this great intelligence. Oh, yeah. East Siders don't. Okay. Stewart. So if, if that, if they, when they put it out again, can they make it very clear? We'll make it clear? very clear. Thank you. They mentioned a rollout on buses. Uh, buses are, are getting a, 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 an early rollout. Um, an early yeah. rollout. Yeah. Yeah. The first rollout is on Staten Island, and, and then they're going to go. Oh, for buses. For and buses. a piece of Brooklyn, because and of course, remember, two buses, three well, buses. Well, yeah, I mean, there's the, the Staten Island buses, the, the, you say Staten which, Island. two of which go across the world. By the way, I neglected to do something. I neglected to introduce